Hello everybody and welcome again to CI Stories uh, and our little series where I go over the different size classes of uh, marine robots and in this episode I want to show you uh, not the sizes of AUVs, autonomous underwater vehicles that we went over in one of the last episodes, uh, but today we want to co uh, concentrate on remotely operated vehicles and remotely operated vehicles are uh, marine robots that are usually connected with a cable to the mothership. So they are not autonomous usually, but uh, they are operated by a pilot on board. Uh, and roughly we also differentiate two factors here, and that is the propulsion technology. One of them is many of them are electrically driven and some of the bigger ones actually have hydraulically driven thruster. This is one of the main uh, differentiation between uh, ROVs, at least in the larger size classes. And then uh, we mostly differentiate them uh, by size. Uh, I will, there's different classifications and uh, some of them are overlapping. So today I'm using uh, four size classes and we have something we call mini ROVs. Uh, then we have what we call observation class and uh, Observation class already mentions that, yes, you can do observations with these vehicles. Uh, observation class vehicles can be small, can be big, can already go into some of the other classes. Um, like a very large observation class vehicle fitted with a lot of payload could already be classed also as an, as an intervention uh, class vehicle, which means that vehicle can actually do something. But the big... Uh, difference here is to the really properly big working robots and that's what we call the work class ROVs and these are really meant for offshore construction, big deep sea sampling and these are really big car sized uh, robots. So these are the rough uh, size classes and now let's go through a few uh, common uh, ROVs that either we have operated so far or that are new developments uh, on the market. So in the mini ROV uh, segment, there's one small mini ROV that is very well known in the market and that uh, is the Vidiray ROV. And that is, yes, as the name already suspects, it's, it's just basically a camera with some thrusters and you can use it to to throw it easily in the water, it's a small size just like that, easily handable, but obviously you're not putting any sensors on or uh, making more complicated things. In that category, well, Video Ray is a classical uh, subsea asset developed by subsea companies, etc. Uh, nowadays, there's also a part which is called underwater drones, which is more coming from the consumer market and more leaning into what comes from the aerial drones and here one of the uh, well-known and very small things that we also use at our institute is the uh, the, find, the finding uh, or the, the finding dory from uh, chasing. It's a very small uh, robot that you can just throw into the water. It comes with a Wi-Fi buoy and you can control it off your phone. So it's a, a really smooth and easy system, but uh, it's definitely not more than a controllable camera underwater. If we then go into observation class, we can start with uh, a smaller observation class ROV, which is the famous uh, Blue ROV2, which has been developed by Blue Robotics and they really completely changed the robotics market. Before ROVs were something expensive for uh, people that had a lot of money for uh, special companies and the aim of Blue Robotics uh, really was to democratize underwater robotics and they put out this really cheap uh, ROV that is uh, only costing around four to six thousand euros and it is widely used now in uh, both in industry but also in the robotics research because you can do a lot of things with this uh, simple platform. If we go to the bit more uh, professional platforms we have, for example, the Ocean Modules M500, which is the one that we are using at AVI with our under ice ROV system Beast. It's a very versatile system because it has also a six degree of freedom uh, control as we discussed in one of the last videos. But one of uh, 
the other well-known competitors in that category is the, the Saab CI Falcon ROV. And this is a very standard industry ROV, mostly used as a camera, but it can be equipped with a lot of instruments. If we then go into the larger classes, the ROVs are, are mainly getting bigger. And uh, I just follow here with the product line from Saab, which is uh, the Cougar uh, ROV and uh, and then also the, C the CI Leopard. And already here you see that the, the boundaries are not really, uh, really differentiated. And a Leopard, depending on what what you equip this vehicle with, you could classify as an intervention or even a light work class uh, ROV. And in this class is also the first time uh, that we start seeing hydraulic vehicles. So for example, here, uh, the larger vehicles by uh, Subatlantic here, we have the Subatlantic Comanche, um, which is also an intervention or small work class ROV which is already quite capable, but not as big and bulky as uh, the huge work class ROVs. Now, when we go to the work class ROV, actually most of the, the vehicles used to be uh, hydraulically driven. So one of the very famous uh, models in, in this group is the, the HD ROV uh, from Schilling Robotics. And, uh, these ROVs are widely used in, uh, in research, in oil and gas, in a survey, etc. They are really standard workhorses and hundreds of them have been produced. But now uh, new companies also enter this market and uh, are trying to provide a bit more innovative uh, products. And there's, for example, the, the Hiss Design uh, supporter from a Norwegian uh, company that uh, is very well taken up by, by the industry. Uh, so these are the hydraulic, hydraulic systems where you get electricity down the, the cable, down to the vehicle, and there you then have a hydraulic pump that generates hydraulic pressure that drives the thrusters. And this gives you the advantage that you can use that uh, power in different ways. You can use it for using manipulators, but you can use it also for propulsion. And there's several advantages to hydraulics also you can a lot in the oil and gas field uh, you need to bring kind of your hydraulic power to something that is sitting at the seafloor and then you can just connect the rov up to that installation on the seafloor and uh, use the hydraulic power generated by the rov to operate uh, the station at the seafloor however there is currently a big change of mind happening in the industry and with thriving towards more resident robots, uh, reliable robots, uh, autonomous uh, subsea operations where you send an unmanned vehicle vessel out at sea and then you have a telepiloted ROV. These hydraulics are not considered to be the most reliable so and environmentally friendly because there can be oil leaks. And hence, uh, there is currently a motion to also go electric on, on the big work class ROVs. And two companies uh, have put out the first uh, fully electric uh, work class ROVs, even including electric uh, seven function manipulator arms. And one of the first of them was uh, SMD with their Quantum EV. It's a 200 kilowatt beast of electric uh, ROV. Uh, which is actually even stronger than any of the existing uh, hydraulic ROVs on the market. So this is a very powerful system and they are also looking a lot into automizing uh, things here. They are also collaborating with a, a company uh, generating or, or producing electric uh, manipulator arms and electric manipulator arms have a, quite some advantages if you want to perform, for example, autonomous operations, because you can control them much better by a computer and uh, do more precise uh, maneuvers. A second vehicle in, in that class was recently released uh, by Saab, and that is the, the EW ROV or EROV, uh, how they call it. And uh, that is supposed to be uh, placed on Ocean Infinity's Armada fleet of uh, at autonomous survey vessels and, and vehicles. 
it's a, also a fully electric uh, work class ROV. So you see there's a lot of uh, different vehicles from the very small ones that cost a few hundred euros uh, like the Chasing Dory up to the super big work class ROVs that cost multiple millions and are bigger than a, than a standard sized truck. So it's a vast uh, yeah, difference in sizes and you can obviously do a lot of different things and we need all of them uh, to perform different tasks at the deep sea. So I hope you like this little overview about these uh, ocean robots and with that I want to thank you a lot for watching and have a nice day.